Hey. All right, guys. What's cool. going on? We are live. Large <laughs> and in charge. Welcome to 88 Improv's Betacast. That's our working title that I made up this evening and didn't run past anybody as far as uh, what we're doing right now. Uh, we're, we're were you attempting to make an actual title for this? I had to make a title. so I just thought, thought that was like the, the known nomenclature for like rough draft in the podcast world. That's a beta cast. Well, it's a beta cast, yeah. It's just a beta cast. Did you ever hear the beta cast? Is now. Ricky Gervais is beta cast. It's like a pilot episode. <laughs> That's what I, I tell him, like, hmm, beta cast. But it's, now I see it. workshopping it. No, it's good. workshopping it right now. It's good. <laughs> Who are you, Tim? I'm Tim. Tim Schoenfeld with 88 Improv. I've been, I'm one of the founding members, as we all are. I've been doing improv not on the internet for a long time, probably about 12, 15 years, something like that, and uh, done a lot of workshops, read all the books, about 1,000 performances. And Are you uh, funny? I, you know, I'm working on it. I'm getting there. I'm like a, I'm a okay. three. I'm a solid three. All right. We'll, we'll work on that. Uh, yeah. Steve, who are you? Uh, I'm Steve, and uh, I echo all of what Tim just said. Um, I am uh, a member of the team who is um, probably a probably a, a two, maybe one. Dude, uh, uh. <laughs> I was I was using like Olympic standards, so I would well. I'm I, I haven't defined how long how large the scale is. It's a pretty it's a pretty big scale, so I'll probably a two or a one. Okay, and that okay, I'm <laughs> Nate. And I am an 88 Improv founder member and general butt kicker. But on my scale, I think I'm making it like a pass fail <laughs> with, a, with a with a pass plus, and I have a pass plus, which means I super passed it. <laughs> good. So anyway, good good. Everyone's good. All right, we got we got topics. We got yeah. some topics. Shall we? I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm gonna take this one down. I mean, I'll be able to see it, but I'm not even sure which one we're starting with. So, no, no, I'm gonna one up you, Nate. Nate, I'm gonna one up you. I'm not right. even gonna look at it. Don't look until it's ready. Okay, and look at it now. Uh, I'm not. I'm just gonna wait for someone to talk. I. Well, what if it's your topic? Well, then it's I'm going to... It's not, though. It's not your topic. It's Steve's topic. Yeah, it's called it's, uh, Quitting. Quitting, the strongest turn. choice. Quitting, the strongest choice? I don't know. Quitting I just... Uh, I feel like... I feel like um, that's a good topic for discussion just because uh, we, the world's full of quitters. Um... And we've all quit something in our own way, once upon a time. Um, I was raised not to be a quitter. Um, there are several things that quit, though. I don't know how you guys were raised. Um, but in the, when, it, when it comes to making strong choices, that's a pretty strong choice. So we, we look down on quitters who just, uh, you know, in a work environment, just like, uh, I can't, you know, this isn't what I signed up for. I can't, I can't hack it. I'm done. Um... And we think that they're they're copping out, they're weak, but maybe they're stronger than those of us who are sticking it out, who aren't happy. Maybe they're saying, you know what, I'm gonna make a stronger choice and do something else. I think that I know, it's think? layers, dude. It's uh, it's because it's tough. Because I I think about how, like, uh, I was in a speech class in college and I was like totally procrastinated on a speech, so I decided I'd give a speech about, you know, stop and smell the roses and cut all the crap out of your life, and then I just, like, walked out of, this, out of the classroom and just left. But comedically, it would have been way funnier if I would have come back in in the middle of the next person's speech and just, like, continued, <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. Instead, I just left because I, I really had nothing left to contribute. So, um, But yet... There may have been somebody in that class who possibly was like impacted, like, dude, that was awesome. And he left, he just made the strong choice. So I think 
is probably every choice is the wrong choice on some level. And uh, and most and some of those choices are also a right choice on some other level. Now, the right choice might be like biggest picture actually the right choice, but probably somewhere along the line it's it's a wrong choice for somebody else. You know what I mean? Poor choices make for good stories. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to. Say, I've got lots of great stories uh, today <laughs> on that premise. <clears throat> Yeah. But um, I, as far as quitting being a, the strongest choice, uh, it, it is a weak choice if you're lifting weights and you quit the first day because you won't get stronger. <laughs> um, but if you are talking about quitting not lifting weights, then it's strong. Profound. Back to your point, Steve. Quick before we change, I think it. We're about to change. We're you know how long this took us? This took Dang us forever. It. Go. We have people are watching us right now. We're Dang switching it. topics. Miss. Okay. Swing and a miss. Weak choice. Okay. Let's. I want to. Okay, make this quick, Tim. This is going to be yours. The topic is. Is that egg on your car? Is that egg on? Yeah, so my neighbor today, I'm outside with my kids out in front of my house. He's like, hey, buddy, somebody egged your car. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, somebody egged your car in my truck. I'm like, well, they tried to anyway. I don't think they hit it. So I go, look down there. And, like, I'm looking at the broad side of my car, and I see, like, an egg shell on the street. Is this the Honda? Is this the, is this the crappy Honda? 1990 Honda Civic with 62,000 miles on it. It has a rattle. Oh, that's nice. And uh, shake to it, but it um, the back passenger tire yeah, shake and rattle and roll, a shake rattle and roll. Just saying. Yeah, that's that's what I call it. That's the dealer's name for it. Um, the back driver's side tire rather has like egg yolk smeared like all over the steel rim with no hubcap, and so somebody apparently, I'm guessing using my CI CSI skills, that somebody probably threw it from about 40 feet away from across the street where it would make sense that they were standing because it looks like they threw it at my car and at my neighbor's truck, which he also missed. And I'm like, this person sucks. Like, how can you be that bad at egging something? Like, basically, he succeeded at egging the street and my rim, which is rusty steel rim. I just, I mean, I'm thankful for their poor aim. It just was like a... Well, I don't yeah, think how do you suck that bad? I, oh, I don't know if the person, I mean... Going back to my topic, quitting or strong choices, he might be making a strong choice. I say he because we don't know. It could be a strong choice. Maybe he's warning you. like Based on how they threw, it like, was a girl. No, no, I'm not saying they threw. I'm, not, I'm saying maybe they cracked it open and smeared it right there in the street. And they gave you a oh, yeah. warning. There, there was a pastry brush nearby. And there, was a, there was a pastry brush in the bushes nearby, you know. Here, yeah. Ooh, 62,000 miles. That is not fair. Not fair. Yeah. I'll I take your shake, point. rattle, and roll and make a casserole out of it. You're going to have you're gonna have civic quiche. <laughs> hmm. Just saying. Never thought of it that way. Yeah. All right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm good, sorry good, you went through story, that. Tim. That's really sad good story. and frustrating. Don't patronize me. That's a that's a strong three effort right there. <laughs> hey. Hey. Okay. Um, should we talk a little improv? Something that we uh, purport to know something about? Oh, I uh, thought we were this whole time. Try. Well, we're we're, we're improvising. That's for sure. But yeah. We got improv tough spots. No, nope, you read that wrong. I've been props. In, uh, English in language, acting, hard to read. It's I have a <laughs> stutter. So anyway, uh, last week went and uh, watched another improv team um, perform at a at a comedy show that was mostly all stand-ups except for this improv team that went in between, like you know, like three or four. Stand-ups went, and then 
a couple, or then this improv team, excuse me, why would I have to, why wouldn't I have to burp while I'm talking? That's awesome. Uh, anyway, so they, they went on in between these stand-ups, and so the stand-ups, of course, are mic'd with microphones in hand, and then <laughs> and there's four guys on stage that have no microphones in hand, because it's virtually impossible to do any kind of decent improv with holding on to a wired microphone. <laughs> and they, you could tell if they were kind of frustrated about it. It wasn't that you couldn't hear them. It's just that people were used to hearing much louder for like 40 minutes, and then it got really quiet. So people are trying to listen, which makes people not laugh as much because they know they won't be able to hear something if they can't. So that made me think of what are some of the tougher spots that we've done improv in. Let's you can't. Let me hear. <sighs> Tim, if you want, if you really want to go, you can go. But I, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I think the obvious ones will come up. But I think, in regards to the environment they were in, I don't know how big the venue was, but the whole tr audience being trained to hear microphones and being and that not working. Um, it reminds me of being at a certain Christmas party for about 1,200 people. In, our, in a huge, like, section A, B, C, D, E, F, G wing of a conference center, and you're on that tiny little 10 by 10 stage, and there's about a good half a football field before the first table, and you realize that uh, an eighth, maybe a quarter of the people can hear you with microphones, but they're not laughing because they're still trying to understand you. Um, <laughs> And the other people in the periphery literally don't know. They don't know what's going on. And I know this is this is a true. This is true because I, I once had an employee work for me, um, who happened to also work part time at this employer. And she said, "Oh, that was you guys. Yeah, we we just saw people moving around. We couldn't hear a single thing, so we were making fun of you." So I felt that too. That and uh, to make to make my comment, I'm gonna stand way back here. <laughs> see, see, what I, see what I did there? See what I did? No, but I was just going to say, so it's two, two, things are, two things are frustrating about what you just described, Nate. A, it sounds like an autobiographical story of like at least 2% of, of all of the shows we've ever done. And uh, getting stuck in between a band, like, hey, uh, <laughs> what are we going to do while we move microphones and wires and drum sets around and uh, do a little mic check with the lead guitar and the whatever? It's like, oh, I got an idea. Let's have a comedy improv team go out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody, that was awesome. But don't forget, don't forget, Tim, that they, the reason that we're actually out there doing that is because um, they usually lie to us about the circumstances in which we are going to get on stage. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll totally get uh, that amount of time. And, yeah, you have your own mics? Well, that's cool. Yeah, we can hook up your microphones for you and everything like that. And then you get to show up, and that is all lies. They, yeah, they won't like, well, hook up your own. Well, during your set, they're going to go ahead and change over the whole stage. Oh, awesome. And they're, they're going to mic check you right before you start. So stand up yeah. there like a bunch of jerks. <laughs> and talking to your mics, and people look at you like you're idiots while you get level set. Because that's what they do with bands, but <laughs> it's way different. Because when you stop going check, 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 one, two, and go, all right, everybody, there's no, like, drum <laughs> kick. It's the same sound. And everyone's like, do they, do they start now? Are they starting? Yeah. And it, it, well, and it's irritating because that happens, and then... Every improv team seems to have to go through it before they can understand how to deal with it. You just take the corded mic and you learn how to do improv with a microphone in your hand. If you want to practice this, go get ice cream with some friends and you'll learn how to use one hand and keep something close to your mouth. Uh, and then if you're doing it with like with a band or whatever, you just got to lay down the law and say, no, actually, we'll just shorten our set. We'll wait till the stage is set and then we'll go out there and do our set. We'll just cut it down to five minutes. You know, like, you just have to man up and, like, protect what it is that you're selling, and if it doesn't going to work, and we just be like, dude, this isn't it, you know? Sorry. 
you can still pay us, but this is just bogus. You know, we'll we'll hang out until after everything's done when nobody's here or something. It's just urgh. that does so, remind me of a time. Uh, Nate, do we have time for like? T t give me 15 seconds. All right, quick. Uh, a time when a band did go long, and we thought, well, this is just going to be atrocious and really terrible. Um, and then our 45-minute show was shrunk down to five minutes. Well, can you just do a game for us? And we still got paid the full amount. That's awesome. So that was an, uh, that was a really tough situation that turned into a great situation. And if I could have three seconds. Train cars, coffee shops, stages, and outdoors. Doing outdoors is like doing doing a, a show in space. There's no reflection of comedy back to you. You might as well be, I don't know, in the shower. Yeah. Uh, Especially the ones that they put you on, like, a flatbed trailer. Those are awesome. Six feet above an audience that's 50 feet away from the trailer. And they're sitting in the shade because there's no trees in the parks. They're way back in the shade. Yeah, yeah, and that's not exclusive to uh, improv. That's like even small unknown bands. They deal with that all the time. Yeah. But at least they have yeah. like music to keep them going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have us. Long that. Yeah, sorry. All right, let's let's talk about um, let's talk about movies. Movies we'll never watch. That might be coming out this summer. Oh. Um, Two things. I don't know any movies that are coming out this summer, and two, I'll never watch Grease. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. I don't watch... Har I, I, I hardly watch movies, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know everyone else watches movies. I was just out with a couple last night, and they're like talking about, oh, we've rented 12 Redbox movies in the last month, and this and that, and like, I... I We've got Netflix and Hulu Plus. My wife uses both of them, and I use neither one of them because there's always sports on. You just got blurry. So yeah. You know. Well, then you talk. Here's you know, here, you know what I I will I'll name a few movies that I'm never gonna watch. Um, the third installment of Batman. Uh, Avengers. What? what? Hold on. I'm not going to watch these. Um, they're, they're autobiographical, any, Nate. That's Steve's any, life. Any other movie. Do you know why? Because I'm poor. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to watch these movies this summer. It's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you what movies I'm not going to watch. Um, <laughs> any I'm not going to watch Parcheesi. Or Connect Four. I might watch Hungry Hungry Hippos. Uh, I'm not probably going to watch. <laughs> just, I'm never going to watch any GI Joe movie. And some of those aren't movies yet, but they will be eventually. <laughs> they just made a Battleship movie. Batgammon is. I hear there's a twist. Yeah, The Game of Life. It depends it's on who directs it. It's a commercial right now. <laughs> okay, so, uh, I've, yeah, I've seen right. that. I, love I do love the cereal. If it's based on I the love commercials. If it's based on the cereal, I'll watch it. I mean, commercials are, are usually like 30 seconds or less, and that is the time frame in which I can commit to. I can commit and to anything. three commercials a day. It's fantastic. With All right. Anything with an entirely bluegrass uh, soundtrack, I'll watch. Nate, I want you to write this topic down then for next time since you changed the card. Mo uh, cereals that should get turned into movies. Cereals. Put a card up there, Nate, and then write that down. Well, we'll just we'll just do it right now. We can roll like that. You can. I can't spell cereal. S. <laughs> S-E-R-I-A-L. <laughs> we don't um, have time to get it right. We don't have time to get it right. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> okay, serials that should be movies? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, Quaker Oats. Yes. Quaker Oats would be directed no. by David Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> 
a la Straight Story, not Mulholland Drive. <laughs> I well, they got to do you know like the the Count Chocula, the movie, and Booberry, Booberry, the movie, <laughs> and what are they? The, the pink Frankenstein guy? A pink Frankenstein? Are you kidding me? In, in times like these, with with the kind of topical news events, a pink Frankenstein, you know, a, a Frankenstein that's been put together with all these other parts, and he's gay. I mean, it, it just, it's a unity, and but he's ostracized, like, you know, maybe he's in North Carolina, or yes. something like that, you know? Perfect. Starring, starring, and the first person to star in all these is high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> what about like uh, what about whole grain? Uh, some of them might claim that whole grain, but they're gonna get a best supporting actor at best. Yeah. Shredded wheat. Yeah, I mean, is it, is it like that, an X Games? Movie? It's two genres. It's two. It's X Games in a really horrific way. It's like this game's gone wrong. I can really see so like, Shredded so like Wheat being the title. Shredded Wheat could be the title for Juno 2. <laughs> Somehow. Like if, Jewel, if Jewel ever directs a movie. Oh, you know what? You know what? When I'm not watching, I refuse to watch is uh, Kashi. Yeah. Yeah. It's like some Danish art house serial film and yeah. it, it's it's got weird crunchy things that just show Definitely up an art house. It, yeah it's a stark white kicks. And sharp kicks <laughs> I'd watch kicks <laughs> kicks <laughs> my kicks are kicks <laughs> alright <laughs> kicks <laughs> What's going on adventure? Here's something I, I don't know anything about. <laughs> no work beards, Tim. Hmm. What's this all about? Yeah, yeah. I can't read it. What is it? No work beards? No work beards. Yeah, no what work is beards. Field? I used to have a beard like a man could be proud of. Like, the kind of beard <laughs> that like, you hang beef jerky from if you needed to. Yeah. See that? Used to be a man. I worked at a hospitality job with that beard. And then uh, some, you know, corporate things happen. Oh, no. Nothing but a mature mustache. There is no such thing as a mature mustache. There's such thing as Super Mario's mustache <laughs> and a pedophile's mustache. And that's the only two mustaches that there are. But for some reason... Oh, is he a, is he an Italian plumber or is he gonna try to do things to me? No, I mean, why is that okay? A guy with a nice groomed beard and like, well, it's hard to define what a nice you know what a groomed beard is. What somebody considers to be a groomed beard might be somebody else's like you know face of a basketball player on their cheek or something. It's like, dude, just set some standards. We all know what a shirt and pants are, and there's some controversy about that. We all know that uh, you can't sag your pants four inches below your crotch and uh, or or more. Um, at, a, at a hospitality type conservative environment. I like my job. I like all the other aspects of it. I like smiling at people. I just think I can be friendly and wooly and get a <laughs> sense of like, I mean, especially in the wintertime, what better thing to greet somebody than somebody who looks cozy? Hi there. I'm just sipping on my coffee, which, of course, you can't drink that out in front of people either, but, uh, you know, just give them that whole warm environment. I'm just a person... I've got some snuggly in me that I just want to get out to you. It's like coming out my face. And I keep it trimmed. Just It's just, I, I don't even know when we decided that was okay. I'm guessing that we somehow brought that on the Mayflower with us because, uh, I mean, I think people had oh, beards. You're blaming, for all the time. you're blaming the people who came over the Mayflower, the Puritans that were trying to get away from oppression. Really no, I was impression. trying to blame the English people who let a non-bearded idea get on their boat. and like, Oh, yeah. They infested Definitely. a flock of people like a rat. And well, uh, it, it just, it, I don't understand. Like, I understand, like, a crazy beard. I understand, like, a biker beard. I understand, like, a, you know, Fu Manchu, you know, things that are, 
but isn't just a normal beard conservative? Jesus Christ had a beard, according to all the paintings. <laughs> he's, he's the epitome of conservative, non-controversial character. Yeah, no one... Oh! The second coming. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. Non-contro- <laughs> non-controversial. So, I... I, don't know, I just, we, we have November. I know you don't. You don't get any month to try, but there is the no shave November that some people figure out how to participate in, and with any luck, that can take on another month. I tried in November to do that, and I got made fun of. But that's also because I, I, I think I fall into category two when I try. Hmm. <laughs> I I don't I think the chin the my chin under my, my beard is probably whiter than the skin underneath on my butt on my ass I think my <laughs> it's probably whiter because I've had this beard for that long and I, it just doesn't see sun it hasn't seen sun for years I have a two week oh. vacation from my job in July I think I should grow a beard and then come back and if I have to. Just leave the mustache. Do it. Just to, just to rub it in. I'm gonna have. To, it'll be like a, a like a short separation from my wife while I have it. But <laughs> I think it might just have to happen. Well, and I think if you do, if you play your cards right and you spend a lot of time in the sun, you'll have a pretty good line where you like a sunburn line or a suntan line, right? I like it. Right. I like it. I like it. Nate, next topic. Next topic. Um, okay. Well, actually, I'm going to say we're we are down to uh, according to our self-imposed time line, we have a little less or about two minutes and thirty seconds left, and we got four topics we haven't. Okay. Yet. I've just got to say something about our self-imposed timeline here for our audience. Uh, we imposed that for your sake because we didn't want to fill the internet up. We wanted to leave some room for other people. Thanks for wasting some of that time, Tim. Uh, technical proficiency. We are or are not the most technically proficient people doing improv casting at Monday night at this time. And I took that away so that maybe my focus would stay in focus and you could see my face a little better other than this blur monster. No, 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 Nate. Happening. This is all part of my technical proficiency. <laughs> yeah. I just indicate to our viewers how proficient we are at technical stuff. I have highlighted the pixels on your screen to show that I know what I'm doing. It's like when a hostage taker shoots a hostage just so they know he's serious. See, it's not really that good at keeping hostages if you kill them all, but if you just kill one. So we, we, Nate, you're the, I'm done. <laughs> I think we'll let our our viewer decide <laughs> on our technical pro- pro- proficiency. Um, next topic: I like enchilada, and it's spelled wrong. Enchiladas. Went Nate, out for Mexican why? food What's last up? night. Yeah. I went out for Mexican food last night, and I I always order enchiladas when I go out for Mexican. My wife likes to switch it up, get different things, and I always get into two beef enchiladas. I prefer them to be in a corn shell. Um, but if it's flour, it has to be whatever, and that's Dude. what I like. And then I like my pintos and cheese. All right, <laughs> that's important. That's good. I like mine in a popcorn shell. My enchiladas are this big. <laughs> All right, I, uh, Steve. We got Steve. What's the definition of glue? New topic, by the way. Uh, definition of glue is just. Um, a substance that that uh, a real substance or a metaphoric substance that tries really hard to bond things together, and there can be good glues and bad glues in cancerous glues, <laughs> and that's also metaphoric and <laughs> real. Um, but that's what it is. It's a, it's about a bond, good or bad. Oh. 
was awkward. What is that? I put in, I put an alarm on it. It's a beta I alarm. A, I felt a rumble the over here. That was a 30-minute alarm. So that was nice to talk about glue for a minute there. It was good. There's a lot of people that say that uh, Steve is the glue of our <laughs> improv team. And then he got there. interrupted while getting really deep about it. See? Nobody sees the glue. <laughs> Remember that, Steve. <laughs> you need to dry clear. Dry clear. I don't want to know that you're there. I just want to know that it, you worked. Yeah. We all notice when you're not there. We just don't want to notice you when you are there. I feel not. bad because we have one topic left, and it's Steve's topic as well, and it feels like kind of crappy if we, like, we rip Wait. it on him all this. So, it's food uh, service. No. You had to rip do some training today. Tell us about oh. being a waiter today. Okay. Okay, so. It's not, your real, it's not your real regular job. Not my really regular job uh, without going into details on what yeah, I, I do. Um, what? I said land the plane. Land the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um I walked in to do um, to do my job, and the restaurant owner said, "Hey, hey, 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 hey! I really need your help right now. I need a huge favor." And I said, "Yeah, sure." And he had a line about ten people deep, and he's like, "I need you." Okay, so here's my list of paper, and right here, I filled I filled all of this, but I need you to fill from this down. Um, so I had to get certain parts of the order um, ready. And then I had uh, customers were turning around and asking me, saying, "Excuse me, can I get a to-go box?" And I, you know, this was this was not, not my restaurant. I I was just trying to do my job and get out the door, um, <laughs> and it was really it was really awkward. In like 30 minutes of like my time and my company's time and not his time. <laughs> dude, dude. It's nothing. I went to the bank the other day. They're busy. They're like, hey, can you hop over the bank thing? I'm like, sure. I'm like, Mrs. Johnson, what can I do for you? Do you want me to check your escrow account and maybe put that in a slowly maturing FDIC insured CD? Sure. And I'm like helping like all these people at the bank. Dude, it happens. <laughs> I, actually, it does because at my job today, like right at the end of the day, my boss is leaving and we have... Uh, deionized water that he uses in his home aquarium that he fills jugs up with, and he's like, "Are you gonna lock up?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "I'll be right back. I gotta come back and grab these jugs of water." And I'm like, "I'll help you carry a jug of water." And he's like, "Really?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And that is technically his personal thing, and it's not required for me to do at work. But I I walked 30 feet to his car with a jug of water in my hand because. I'm a team player too. You gotta be. But Steve and I can't do our team participation if we have a full beard like you, Nate. <laughs> hey, we're lesser than. We we all have our things. We all have our things. Well, that is the end. This is the end of our show. So I I we have two people viewing us right now. So if you'd love to or like, or even just find it mildly amusing to follow us at 88improv on Twitter and send us any topics and or questions, concerns of that nature to to this, to this, and uh, we'll address them next week, next Monday, and, uh, and we'll talk about what other people want us to talk about along with what we want to talk about. We are 88 Improv. We're three-quarters of 88 Improv. Thank you all for watching us this week. And uh, on our inaugural beta cast, we're not, this is not our, this is just a, this is just an awesome test. So I will say good night, Steve. Good night. Oh, beta test, you've been watching a beta cast. Been watching it, the beta thing. You it's can find it on YouTube. What? Just search 88 beta cast. Search for it on YouTube. 88 right. beta cast. It's a name, not nomenclature. 88 beta. Are we fading out? Shouldn't the camera pull away and we see the news desk? <laughs>